Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the use of the dynamic keyword in C Sharp and also how to load up an external um, DLL library which is not a reference in your project. Um, I'm just going to show you the DLL file that we're going to be loading up. As you can see it's got a person class in it. The assembly is called um, dynamic DLL. It's got a person class and the person class Sorry, um, has a constructor, a method called get age, method called get name, and a method called set personal info. Okay, let's get started. Oh, sorry. Um, I've got the DLL file in my project's debug folder, and that's how we know where to find the project. Um, yeah. So to get started, we're going to get a list of the types within our assembly. Our assembly is, of course, um, dynamic DLL. So we're going to start off with the type array. We're going to call it extern. Extern DLL. Um, I'll just name it types. External extern DLL types equals to assembly dot load. Now we're gonna have to put in the name of our assembly. In our case, it is D Y N A M I C D L L dynamic DLL. And then we're gonna um, give it another dot, then we're going to go to get types. And this should load up the DLL file and get all the uh, classes within that um, DLL. Just to show you, uh, just to show you um, the classes that are in the DLL, and just to check that it's working right, we're going to put in a for each statement. VAR is going to be type in extern DLL types. Oops, and it's just going to write out item dot to string. And yeah, I don't know if it's too small for you guys to see, but it says dynamic DLL dot person. So they it found a person class inside of dynamic DLL. So we know that Visual Studio I mean our program can reload up this DLL file and it can also see what's inside of it. Now we can get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Now we're gonna create a new dynamic object. To do that we just type in dynamic and I'm just gonna name my dynamic object person and to create this dynamic object we're going to go activator dot create instance from extern dll 0 so th the first value in the external dll types array and now we're going to have to um oops Put in the values of the constructor for that um, class, and I know in my case it is a string followed by a integer. So we're going to type in the string, and it's going to be the person's name. So it's going to be I'm going to name my person Mary, and the integer or her age is going to be 21. Okay, now we're gonna try to write the uh, type. Sorry, try to use the get name and get age method to get Mary's name and age. So we're gonna go person dot. Oops, we got C W. By the way, if you press tab twice, it writes stuff for you. So yeah, that's a little um tr trick. We're gonna go person dot 
Oops. Get name. I uh, might have just noticed that I didn't have any IntelliSense when I was writing that. That's because it loads up the um, DLL library at runtime, and Visual Studio has no idea what's in it. Mary is. Person dot get age okay cool and now when we when we run it we should say Mary is twenty one so person dot get name which is Mary person dot get age which is twenty one okay now we're gonna um invoke the method called set personal information in the person in the um person class so we're gonna go person dot set personal info and this takes in two parameters one would be the person's name And the other will be the person's age. So John should be 21. I'm just going to copy and paste that under the under. Uh, I'm sorry. After we've changed the personal information, so we're going to run run it now, and we see John is 21. Um, just to show you guys what happens if we get a spelling spelling error in our method names. For example, if we say get names, then we're gonna get get an error saying one time binder binder exception. So, as you can see, um, Visual Studio didn't pick up that error, and you guys should know by now that if it's a method in your project, then Visual Studio knows the name of it, and it just helps you um, f catch that error before we compile the program. But in this case, it didn't because um, it loaded up this stuff at runtime. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.